back to New York. It's a freaking hammer. To the famed Finger Lakes. Cayuga this time. There we go. For the last dance of the year. Get it. Yeah. Last chance, a trophy that brings with it a trip to the classic. Yes, cold fish, baby. Oh. If you're on the outside Woo. looking in, <sighs> you need to find an extra gear so you can get to the Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship. Yeah. Bam! It's a little better. Going to be some surprises when it comes to who gets in and who gets left out. One thing's for sure. With this one, nothing gets left on the table. That is absolutely right. If you've got anything left in the tank, you better be prepared to bring it this week, this important week, maybe the most important week of the regular season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. These 100 plus anglers who started way back in March down in Florida are now come to the final end of the road for the season. And for, for these guys, so many accounts to be settled, whether or not you're gonna make it to the classic, whether or not you're gonna make it to the postseason, Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year Championship. And for some of them, unfortunately, whether or not you're going to be able to fish next year. Uh, it's all on the line at this tournament. And the number one thing that you have to look at, the venue this week, Cayuga Lake, it's the first time most of these guys have ever been here. And you look at, you know, you look at Lake Champlain in New York, Oneida, Thousand Islands, rich, giant, small mouth. Not really the case here on Cayuga, right. but there's one dynamic here that these guys do understand, and it's that right there shallow grass out to 22 feet of water. It grows from one inch out to deep water. And whenever you put these guys on a body of water that has grass, it's gonna be in somebody's wheelhouse. And the other thing about this lake, one of the best largemouth fisheries a lot of these guys have ever seen. All right, when we come to New York, it's usually pretty serious. It's usually the end of the year, and usually the fishing is great. I think we'll have all those elements in place today. Wouldn't worry about that. They're gonna blast them. Let's take this Cayuga Lake event right from the start. Hey, day one action, our leader. How about the guy who came to New York State last year's seventh event of the season and fished his way into the Bassmaster Classic? Brandon Pollock, 20 pounds, 10 ounces, a strong day one. Very, very solid stringer on day one and kind of a dynamic out on the water right now. It can take about a 20 mile boat ride early day two. The dynamic is has been trading blows really both days of the event so far with Mike Iaconelli, but both of them getting along in a big way, Tommy Sanders. It's a start. There we go. Paymax, sucker! That's what you did to me yesterday. <laughs> I pulled in here yesterday after I've been sitting here and caught one on his first cast. We'll get paybacks on him today. Come on, small mile, decent one too. A little bit bigger than I thought. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Ah, ah. Come on. Gosh, these fish here are the meanest fish I've ever caught. No, no. God, man. Come on. Come on. No. See that? How mean things. I'm done playing games with you. Golly. Get in here. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, it's first cast. No. Yeah. Boom. That's good stuff right there. Brandon Polinick trying to back up his day one effort, and a great one it was. This is day two, a smallmouth in the mix there. You predicted before this one, smallmouth would not be as important as some people think. Well, trust me, oh, looking at a smallmouth like that, after looking at the day one weigh-in, you do not want to weigh a smallmouth in here unless it's four and a half to five pounds. The great thing about what Polinick is doing in this tournament, fishing 25 to 40 feet of water, and almost every one of his spots will load up with largemouth by midday throughout really the first two days, that's exactly what he's weighed in. Yeah, not near as good an effort on day number two, 16 pounds and five ounces to come back after that 20 pound effort. He's gonna drop all the way from first to ninth place. Here's a man who made mm. a big move, Greg Hackney on One day two. One of the most two. powerful fishermen in the country right now. And here's the thing, not on a lot of quantity, but when he does catch one, it is a Cayuga giant. I'm sure that was a car. It's real, real dark looking. We let him look at my cricket, just in case. Just in case. Number 
more. <laughs> Maybe it wouldn't. Nice little hammer. <laughs> Number two. Well, there's the whole story of what's going on with Greg Hackney. Number one, he is not near another competitor, and every time he sets the hook, it is that size bass and bigger. Absolutely. What you just mentioned there, not near anyone, very much has the look he had those first couple of days at Dardanelle. In the perfect spot for what he wants to do, no one around to bother him. And he said in the morning these fish would set up on the outside weed line, kind of mid-lake, called the mid-lake area, about 17 to 22 feet of water, and he said the jig was the best thing to get. Him. Number one, he said, I'm going to land every one that bites me. Greg Hackney had a great day one, 20 pounds plus on day one, but this day looking to be even better. Colin Fall, and he's looking to move up. 23 pounds and an ounce with 43 pounds, six ounces. Greg Hackney takes the lead at the ARE Truck Cabs, Bassmaster Elite. How about Greg Hackney? Comes into this tournament with the lead by a single point. Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Now he's got the lead after two days in the tournament. How could you be in a better spot? Well, he's leading the tournament, but he wants to share some thoughts about his feelings. This stuff makes you disgruntled. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've never been as mad at anything as I have been this. I'll tell you what, another problem with this whole sport. I should be, I got the classic made. Don't have to catch one. Don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm you always, it's always something else. There's never an end to it. I think without a doubt, this is the hardest and the roughest on you mentally, physically. It will crush you and and hold you down on the ground and stomp you while you're down. Sport there is out there. The ARE Truck Caps Bass Master Elite is brought to you by Mencota. Right Boats. Nitro. And by Toyota. Keep your fingers crossed. Hope Joe knows where we're going. <laughs> we have an idea. All right. See you when I get back. Governor Cuomo of New York, Joe Santo of the Bassmaster Elite Series nearby on a neighboring lake, getting ready to go do a little fishing in the I Love New York spirit. Uh, exactly right, and an interesting technique right there, but here's the great thing. Our guys went out and absolutely crushed them. Caught them really good. There's Don Logan, one of the owners oh. of the Bassmaster, right there in the boat with him. Those guys having a fun day success here in the Finger Lakes area. Cayuga Lakes, the lake we're concentrating on for the main event this week. Third day of action at the final event of the year, the ARE Truck Caps Bassmaster Elite and Greg Hackney, the man in charge after two rounds. And Hackney said every single morning has been critical. There's been a, well, the best way to put it, a flurry for the first hour. And Greg Hackney, you know, competing for the Angler of the Year title this year. Tommy Sanders, he would like to win this tournament, but he's the last thing on his mind. About 10 years ago, it was Greg Hackney made a big run at Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, and you don't think he's thinking of it now. You're crazy. I'm motivated. <laughs> I'm motivated more about that. I ain't even worried about this tournament, to be honest with you. <laughs> I guess I should be, but you know I'm not. That's not what I'm fishing for. <laughs> they asked me last night, they're like, well, have you thought about Angler of the Year? Or are you just thinking about the tournament right now? And I'm like, I ain't worried about the tournament. <laughs> That's not what I'm, it's all about that. All about the angler of the year for me. Oh, he's not hooking very good. Dang it, I'm afraid he's gonna come off. I can see that jig sticking way out of his mouth. It scared me. Here in New York, and Greg Hackney using that skill set to take a lead into the third day and trying to hang on to it with some strong pursuit out there. Brandon Polinick, we 
the day one leader. Comes into this second day trying to get out of ninth place after having led this one. Winds up in fifth place. Total of 54 pounds and seven ounces. Angler from Idaho. And how about your Bassmaster Elite Series rookie slash freshman of the year? Don't call Jacob, me a rookie. What did you say to me? Jacob Peraznik, very solid so far. 55 pounds, 11 ounces. We talk about the dangerous pursuers Greg Hackney's got to look out for. Here's one of them here. Is that dangerous? Well, we saw that on the t-shirt. Chris Saldane from California, third place after day three, 56 pounds plus. And you think a guy that comes from all that grass down there at Rayburn doesn't like to look at this place. How about Todd Faircloth? Todd Faircloth, slow, quiet, and steady, 60 pounds, seven ounces. And from there, Greg Hackney, well, he got his job done. Only caught four bass, but they were the right bass on day three. 17-11, Greg Hackney back in the lead with 61 pounds and an ounce. The hack attack whacks him once again. There he is, man of the hour after three days of fishing on Cayuga Lake. Certainly the man of the hour coming in here with the lead in Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. So a very eventful tournament for Greg Hackney. Takes the lead into the final day, but not by much. Certainly 10 ounces is not a big lead on this lake. Todd Faircloth, also one of his close pursuers for Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year title in there. Now as we, we have all that business out of the way, the three days of fishing at Cayuga, we know a lot more about those questions, those accounts that are settled here at the end of the year, and we know who's not going to the Bassmaster Classic at Lake Hartwell. Those names are shocking Some right there, Some of the Mark biggest Donna. names that we have ever not covered next year, Kevin Van Dam, Rick Klon, but guys that we're so used to, you see Shaw Grigsby, Brent Chapman, a lot of familiar faces not going to be fishing with us. Ish Monroe, four times a winner with BASS, and Tommy Biffle. So many wins with Bass, and of course, some family issues for him. A, a very serious illness for his wife, Sharon. She's home now, doing better, but he won't be able to make it. Rick Clunt, you Rick talk about one of the names that are not going to be fishing next year. This man's career has revolved around being in the Bass Master Classic, and not only being in it, winning it four times. And at Lake Dardanelle this year, you saw you saw one of those climbs at the leaderboard, you're like, He's going to do it, and he's going to get to the Classic. Not his year. The other venues really didn't offer him a chance to stretch out and do what he does. And what he's done through the years, he's transformed, of course, the sport of bass fishing, not just with his techniques and the way he got it done, but his devotion to the sport and how deep it ran, a whole other dimension that people learned about with him. He'll tell you the Classic's the number one thing as well. Kevin Van Dam will tell you, man, the Classic's everything. Always has to not have, uh, it, it, to put this in perspective, to not have Kevin in a Classic, it's just ground none of us have been on, himself included. And trust me, Kevin Van Dam, he, he'll tell you, there was not one tournament this year that slipped through his hands. There were several that slipped through his fingers. 24-time qualifier won't be going this year. He's, of course, determined to do better, but right now, believe me, it hurts. That'll be one of the toughest right. deals, for sure, is, is going to the Classic and not being in it. Um, but I can tell you this, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back with a focus and um, an intensity that, you know, I can't do it not giving 150%. And, uh, you know, we'll see what the results are. He's the best ever. Can't believe he's not going to be in it in the end of the season, but you can bet he will be back next year in a big way. Meanwhile, Greg Hackney coming up trying to knock out his first win since 2006. Also, Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year points all on the line. Ready to swing that hammer again. You know, there's an old saying that they say to know where you're going, you need to know where you've been. So this week, for six seconds, we decided to test that. Name as many of the lakes as we fished this year in the Bassmaster Elite Series as you can in six seconds. Go. Delaware River, uh, St. John's River. <laughs> Lake Seminole, Toledo Bend. Toledo Bend, Cayuga, Delaware River. Uh, Gosh dang, uh, Dardanelle. Uh, but, but, uh, Ch Ch Chickamauga. Uh, what's the other one down there? Gosh dang it. We had two in Florida. Uh, Seminole. Oh, uh, Se <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty tough. Bull Shoals. And did we fish Bull Shoals this year? No, we didn't. We fished Table Rock. I don't remember if we fished it. I suck. Go. Seminole, St. John's, Table Rock, Toledo Bend, Dardanelle. Delaware River, uh, Chigamagua, Cayuga. Dude, I think you nailed it. I know I did. Oh, I love that Brandon Card kid. He knows everything. Oh, he's a know-it-all. Mr. Know-it-all, Brandon Card right there wins six seconds. 
Dave Mercer administering that on the final day before the launch. We got 12 anglers ready to go the last regular season fishing day of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. And Greg Hackney leading the way and Hackney with just a 10 ounce lead over Todd Fairclaw. Very, very shaky day three. Only had four bites, but they were the right bites. Almost 18 pounds running. Call it running about 15 miles down lake, fishing on the east side of the lake. And for the first time this tournament, Greg Hackney not really thinking about the Angler of the Year, starting to realize he's got a pretty darn good chance to win this tournament. And like we said, every single day, there is a one hour flurry. The first hour of fishing, very critical for Greg Hackney. You know, winning this tournament has not been on my mind and it probably shouldn't be, but in a way it is because I need to win this tournament to stay in the lead for Angler of the Year. And I, I'll be honest with you, whenever I got in contention and it, it became a reality that I could win Angler of the Year, I'll be honest with you, I haven't focused on anything else. I don't care about anything else. You know, I fished my whole career for a chance like this and you know, I'm gonna do everything I can to hold on to it. You know what? That right there is what I like about my little hole. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Lord, thank you. I thought it was a 10 pounder. I was like, why can't, I guess he's turned sideways. I'm like, fine, I done got me one of sure enough. Absolutely a throwback bass fisherman. Biggest rod, biggest line, biggest jig, and here's the thing. This guy does not go to tournaments saying, doggone it, I gotta catch a limit of two to three pounders and upgrade. He is trying to catch the biggest bass in the lake, and I'm not talking one, he's trying to catch them all. Davey Hyde is kind of the prototype Absolutely. for that kind of fisherman right there. Absolutely fearless, and he doesn't have that much margin to deal with today. He starts with a 10-ounce lead over Todd Fairclaw. Here's the biggest difference. It's calm today. He's able to see his shots. He said that wind is what crushed him on day three. This weather is exactly what Hackney was looking for. Greg Hackney, who has had a fantastic year, looking to make it even better, not just with winning this tournament, but what may lie beyond as we move. Hackney fishing very isolated spots on the west side and east side of the lake and just north of him. Well, here's the negative factor in this tournament. Todd Faircloth on very good ones, but problem is 15 yards away, he is sharing them with Chris Zaldane. Here we are, our first spot. Todd Faircloth's right over there. We just uh, we beat him here. We stopped a little early. We'll let him settle in. We'll just work the outside here. I got a couple of way waypoints on the outside and he's fishing just on the inside here. So the first hour and a half is so key here right now. There's one first cast. It's a good one. Stay up there. Hey, 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 come on, stop that. Hey, come here. Yes. Three and a half pounder, first fish, first cast. Whew. That's a nice one. All right, baby, nice first fish. Like I said, we're just gonna stay off, stay a little deeper. Try to load them up. Sal Dane starting his day with a five pound deficit to the leader Greg Hackney and catching one on the first cast fully within sight of Todd Faircloth just yards away. This is a massive school of fish. Sal Dane fishing a little bit deeper and well, throughout this entire tournament by about nine o'clock, these guys had all the weight they needed and they would just protect this area and stop fishing. But this, look at this final day of fishing, Sal Dane putting on the show for Faircloth. How much of a head game is this sport? You get it, it'll get you get in your head, no doubt. <laughs> he 
saw Zaldane strike early, and now it's now it's Faircloth doing something obviously a little bit different. Well, like we said, this first hour of fishing is critical, not only for Faircloth and Zaldane, all of our anglers said really the first hour was, that's when you can catch your biggest bass, but dividing these fish is the biggest problem that these anglers are going to have on the final day. You see Faircloth and Zaldane trading blows. There's obviously a lot of fish in this area, but the question is how many fish are that size and bigger that are left? Todd Faircloth, four Bassmaster wins, trying to make it five, trying to win in 2012, 13, and 14 here, but definitely a big time deficit early going on this fourth day to Greg Hacking, five pounds worth of deficit, but believe me, lots more fishing. You can see it's still early on the fourth and final day at Yuga Lake. We've got some fireworks on the way, you can bet. It's a freaking hammer. I think that's the biggest one I've caught here. The ARE Truck Cabs Bass Master Leap is brought to you by Berkeley. Evan Williams Bourbon. And by Yamaha. Bassmaster Elite Series final regular season event of 2014 New York State, Cayuga Lake in the Finger Lakes area. Big tournament here, Todd Faircloth, one of the guys pursuing our leader. Can I do it, Tommy? Can I turn Please? it down for Faircloth? Yes. It's the Evan Williams Bourbon shot of the day of the week. Very, very nicely you, done man. right there. Back to Thank Faircloth you. in action on this fourth day. And Faircloth will tell you, here's the dynamic that's gone on here all week. These guys found the same fish, and most critical, they both fished it the entire week. I didn't think anybody was fishing the spot the first day. I stuck around there till about 10.30, and then I never saw anybody come there, but evidently he fished there late that afternoon the first day and caught some, and then the next morning, we both caught about 17, 18 pounds off of it and left it at eight o'clock. It's been mutual in the fact that you know, we're respecting each other's angles, each other's water. We're in the same area, a real small area, but we both have different spots. I'm going to stay out of his way. I'm going to stay out of his way. I'm going to stay on the outside, but I'm still looking for a 20-pound bag. You know, he's fighting to get in the top 50, and I understand that. And, uh, you know, I'm fighting for the AOY, so we got a lot of, on the line here, and, uh, you know, hopefully it'll all work out for both of us. I was normally culling by now. It was just, I, I mean, I'm just not getting a number of bites. When you've caught as many good ones as I have off this spot this week, you definitely got to give it a shot. Heard Todd Faircloth right there, as you'd pointed out earlier. Numbers has been his game this week. He's not getting them on this final day. Hey, and Todd Faircloth yeah. is one of the best fishermen on the Bassmaster Elite Series, not just the last few years, but possibly in the history of the Bassmasters. The other thing you look for in this tournament, two of the best grass fishermen in the world, guys that fish Toledo Bend, Hackney, Faircloth. The other thing, though, you're starting to notice on this final day, he has definitely lost his size. I haven't weighed one in like that all week. Hopefully he's not in the box by the end of the day. We'll take him right now. <laughs> Todd Faircloth hoping his day turns a little bit more prosperous in terms of bigger bass and more of them. We've got 12 anglers out here laboring on this final day, including Dean Rojas, who has his own Elite Series win. State of New York over on Oneida right there, was cruising along at about 16 pounds a day through day one and day two, and then knocks well over 18 pounds on day three find himself in the top 12, 10th place to start the day. I know you're smiling. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Get you some of that. Kevin Short with one of the biggest comebacks we've ever seen in the standings in the Bassmaster Elite Series from him. I mean, with a very quiet, solid year, Jared Lintner having a very solid tournament here on Cayuga. Yeah, we remember Jared Lintner doing so well on Lake Onondaga over in Syracuse, New York, a few years back. And Brent Chapman, 2012, Bassmaster Angler of the Year, working very hard to make it into the Classic this year, and putting forth a good effort here on Cayuga Lake. Definitely doing it for the Chapa Maniacs from there. We're going to yes. go. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're going to head back down the lake to Greg Hackney. And here's the thing with Greg Hackney, slipping a little bit on day three. Well, here on day four, you're starting to see that surge, though, and he is fishing very, very specific areas. These are not one-mile stretches. These are 15 to 20-yard stretches, and we go under the water right now. He's concentrating. All these big ones are coming on that outside grass line. Call it 14 to 22 feet of water, somewhere in that range. And he's catching these bass out of grass that he's not visually looking at. 
he can feel it and he said there's something hard on the bottom i don't know what it, if it's rock what it is but it's bringing a lot of bluegill around he said all these big large mouth are bluegill killers and that's why he said i'm using a very heavy jig the key with his jig it falls like a rocket and generally every time that jig would get in these key zones well it's obvious the quality has been here the entire week i need 25 to make up for yesterday you know see if i'd have caught that fifth bite yesterday right now we'd be thinking about where the after party was going to be <laughs> Everything would have to go just, I mean, I, that day I had the 23 pounds. It, I mean, you know, I got the right bites and caught them all, you know, so I don't. That would have been, you know, my best chance at catching 25 was that day. But you know, what I ran into that day was I, I culled a four with a five and I'm like, <laughs> you know, I, especially like after yesterday and the way these fish are set up, I just know when I get them biting, I need to get them. Chances are it ain't gonna be just non-stop. You know what I'm saying? That may be the biggest one I've caught here. That's serious right there. I almost thought about not swinging it, but I knew this would be freaking half mile. I didn't put my jig in the live well. <laughs> I knew I was like, damn, it's like sticking the bottom. <laughs> it's a freaking hammer. I think that's the biggest one I've caught here. Whew. I ain't lying to you. My whole body's just in some kind of weird state. I knew I was like, oh, it's big. I knew it was just different. Didn't fight. It's like I'm standing up here on pins and needles. I'm ready to swing that hammer again. <laughs> Can't it took good enough. Get it. Man, I couldn't tell. I was scared. Kind of got on me. Well, I tied yesterday with number of fish caught. <laughs> Without a doubt, Greg Hackney, compared to the rest of the field, is on a different caliber of bass on this lake. And the other side of it is, and we've talked about this off camera, we have waited for this for a decade from Greg Hackney. Absolutely. No doubt about it. You, you can even ask him. He's waited for this moment. And this year has set up, if you really talk to him, it's a different fisherman than we've talked to in years past. Absolutely. He talked about all those opportunities that slipped by in the past. Can't really explain them. Just knows got to live in the moment and take advantage of this opportunity right there. And he goes from a 10-ounce lead mm. to almost a 10-pound lead. Beatdown. Wow, a beatdown on day number four. From Greg Hackney, over to our winner from Toledo Bend earlier, this 2014 Bassmaster Elite season, Jacob Poroznik. And Jacob Poroznik has come to the Bassmaster Elite Series to play in a big way. I mean, he caught a, a Carhartt Big Bass stud, six pounds and six ounces, and still catching good ones on this final day. Man, it just looks perfect today, man. It just looks like five pounders all day long. <laughs> I just got a feeling, you know? You know how you get a feeling? Yeah. It is sometime, you just kind of know you're doing the right thing. And the thing is, any kind of grass fishing that you do, it's always, it always goes in little spurts. You know, you get three or four little bites and then you, you won't, you won't forever. And then all of a sudden, you get three or four or five, six more, you know, it's just like they feed for a few minutes, you know, and you just happen to drop it on one's head. <laughs> I 
That's what we're after today, boys. Five of them right there. You know what that is, Tommy Sanders? What's that? A typical Cayuga Lake Dagum stew. Right, that's a big one right there. And uh, Jacob Barosnik, he knows the, uh, the simple arithmetic. Five of those get you yeah. way up the leaderboard. Yeah. There's a lot Get more fishing to come on this final day. 12 anglers out there. $100,000 in the yes. last trophy of the year. Three minutes to go. You caught a good one. Let us know about it. Tweet it, hashtag Big Catch. Oh, I'd love to see what you've got going on out there, what we've got going here. New York, the final event of 2014. Hey, we're wrapping up some business here. Brandon Polinick trying to go out with a bank. Started this tournament with the lead, first day lead. He's been all over the place since then. Exactly right, man. Really, he's kind of had a mixed bag the whole tournament. Big, large mouth, solid, small mouth. But where I give him a lot of credit is looking for schools that other anglers ignored. He shared one area with Ike and Ellie, but found two schools of fish in 25 to 40 feet of water that no other angler was on. Brandon Pollock knows, though, Look at that. way behind. Um, I mean, I'm gonna have to have at least 22 to even have a shot, uh, probably closer to 25 or 26. So I just gotta figure out how to catch five, five pounders. Uh, with this sunny weather like this, a lot of times these big fish will move up shallow and cruise around and look for bluegill, brim, because they'll get up here shallow. So it's kind of what, what we're looking for a little bit here. Ugh, gosh, that one's digging. Big one. Holy cow. Come on, stay down, stay down. Don't quit. Yeah. Bam! That's more like it. It's a little better. It's a little better. That's more like what we're looking for right there. Brandon Polinick, you heard him earlier, said he's going to need in the mid-20s someplace if he wants to be a factor at the end of the day today. He's been a factor in this tournament to his good fortune. He started out 33rd in points, now he's up in the 20s. Exactly right. He said he did a horrible start to the season. He said he was, well, now get this, he was just stubborn the first couple of tournaments, oh, yeah. but, but loosened up a little bit after that. But if you look at the area he's in, this is what Edwin Eber said about his practice. Are you ready? I found a school of hundreds of four to six pound bass. Well, it looks like you found one of them right here. We're getting, we're getting back. There you go, there you Edwin. Go. Looking for some improvement there is Edwin Evers, another guy looking to improve things quickly in a big way. Todd Faircloth, second place to start this day, only 10 ounces back. Now he's closer to 10 pounds back. You know, and, and this morning just did not start off very good for Faircloth, really. You can definitely see that dividing these fish with Sal Dane has taken its toll. He got a lot of bites this morning, but they were not the caliber that they caught the first three days of competition. This is the first move we're going to see on this fourth day of competition. Fair Club's going to move not that far. He's going to move about two miles north of his primary area. And the thing about Fair Club, what he said about this lake, he said, where all the grass looks the same from above the water, you have to find in irregularity on the bottom. Somewhere where it just changes depth. It could only be six inches to 12 inches deeper, but those are the key areas. Find out the little irregularity and you would find the bigger bass on Cayuga. Oh yeah, thank you, Lord. I needed that. See, Browner? That will help the situation. Got my shearing fans over there on the bank. They come down the bank half a mile and a half. I've moved to my secondary spot here and it seems like the fish today are tighter in the grass than they have been, which is conducive to the conditions, I'm pretty sure. That's very encouraging to me. It's a long stretch down through here that I got bit on, so I'm just gonna keep the boat kind of towards the outside edge, cast up in the grass, work that cutter worm to the outside edge. A good one. A big one. Woo! Woo! Hmm. 
<clears throat> there we go. We're getting somewhere now. Yeah, we're getting a pound now instead of ounces. <sighs> All right, Todd, just settle down. Do what you know to do. Catch another 20 pounds. We pointed it out earlier. Todd Faircloth all week long been doing very well by going through better numbers of fish. That's how he's located the big ones, put the big ones in the box. But so far today, from the very start, Todd Faircloth was not seeing that sort of activity. Starting to get a little faster and more furious for him. In the end, just does he have time to make up the 10 pounds of deficit to Greg Hackney? Well, definitely Hackney's been the biggest headache for the entire field all week long. Greg Hackney coming out this morning firing. And the biggest worry was after only catching four bass on the third day of competition, well, did he have anything left? Well, here on the final day, obviously he did, and he's ready to put this thing away. It's funny, all I've really thought about the whole week, practice and all, is the anger of the year, but today I'm concerned with winning because the two go to get, you know, I can't let them make any points on me. Of course, Aaron's not gonna make any more because he didn't make it today, you know, but he did see, he helped himself a bunch yesterday because see, Aaron was only one point behind me coming into this tournament. See, Faircloth was 19 points behind me yesterday, being in second. He was still 19 points, you know. He ain't making up anything. Not unless he wins. You know what I'm saying? He can fall, but we not gonna, we doing our damnedest not to let him get ahead of us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now surely this boat is not fixing to run between us and these other boats. <laughs> uh, different strokes for different folks. <laughs> I mean, he just ran right through the crash bed. <laughs> But you know what? You can't let anything bother you in this deal. Dang. Well, undoubtedly, if they not woke up, they should be now. Damn. I'm about jacked out of it. Look at that. That's a cool pounder. I think that was a four pounder. I, it ain't that big, but golly, what a thick fish. I didn't have any idea it was that big. Time will tell. I guess 25 is possible. And need to make note on this final day, those are not the same fish that we're showing right there. They're just all that size. Absolutely individual fish. They're not the same fish, all big. Hackney really on a roll on this final day, more so than at any point in this tournament. Yeah. Chris Saldane did not leave that spot he was sharing with Todd Faircloth. Gonna remain there and try to well, turn around his fortunes and get something big to happen yes. before it is all over, but he's got a long way to go. He wants to catch cool. Rick Hackney. That might be a better one. Oh yeah, it's a big one. Stay on there, girl. Oh gosh, stay on there. Oh, please stay on there. Come here, come here. No, don't do that. Yes, cold fish, baby. Ugh. Three minutes to go. Yes. Nice, let's call a pound, shall we? Bye-bye. <laughs> all right, we got cookie cutters again. They're all that size. Whoa, don't do it. <laughs> Whoa, careful, Zell Dangerous. Every fish is precious there. A little bit of an anxious moment for Chris Aldane and fishing time has come to an end. The final reckoning now back in Union Springs. Mm -hmm. Let's get ready to win! He's an eight-time Bassmaster winner from Talala, Oklahoma, E squared, Edwin Evers. Yeah. 
Edwin Evers started the day with 52 pounds and 12 ounces, looking for 14-15 to start to, to take the lead. 19 pounds, 13 ounces. Get loud, New York. Our first angler in the top three, looking to get Zal Dangerous from San Jose, California, the California kid, Chris Zaldane. Chris Zaldane looking to bring the pain. Had 56 pounds and four ounces to start today, looking for 16.6 to take the lead. 18 pounds, eight ounces. The California kid crushes him on championship Sunday. From Jasper, Texas, T-O-double-D, Todd Faircloth. Looking for 14 pounds and six ounces to take the lead from Chris Zaldane. 15 pounds, six ounces, one pound in the right direction. Get loud for Todd Faircloth, your brand new leader. With that, we say goodbye to Chris Zaldane, but a big round of applause, an incredible finish. From Gonzales, Louisiana, the hack attack, Greg Hackney. Looking for 14 pounds, 13 ounces to take the lead. 23 pounds, 15 ounces, the hack attack is back. Get loud, let me hear it. Your 2014 ARE Truck Caps Bass Master Elite Series Champion, the hack attack is back. Greg Hackney. Greg Hackney takes the trophy at Cayuga and extends his lead in Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. When we come back, he'll be here to tell us how he got the win and what may lie ahead. The ARE Truck Caps Bass Master Elite is brought to you by Skeeter Boats. Bass Pro Shops. Hubbin Bird. And by Mercury. 23 pounds, 15 ounces. The hack attack is back. Yeah, the crowd loves it. Let's hear it for this guy. Your champion, Greg Hackney. Started the day with less than a pound lead over Todd Faircloth, and look at the result there. The blowout, almost a 10-pound victory over the rest of this strong, strong field here. So for Greg Hackney, for all the great years, all the high finishes, it has been a while between victories, but this one was timely, exceptionally timely, because well, look at that logo right there, Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. It's all coming down, the last regular season event, and Greg came in with the one-point lead. Look at this now, that lead now extended to 15 points over Aaron Martins and Greg Hackney. I mean, you know, we like, we like tense moments. We like drama. You look like you're on cruise control out there today. You look like it didn't matter. You were just having great fun. Well, you know, it's one of those deals, Tommy, where just every now and then in this sport, everything goes right, which is not very often. And, you know, this was my week. Went was, really right. Was this your favorite Bassmaster television show in the history of the Bassmaster? Without a doubt. I think I'll be, <laughs> I'm probably going to burn the tape up watching it over and over again. Let's fast forward. You did great. You did obviously all you could do here on Cayuga. But the guys that are fishing behind you, and Aaron Martins, a Todd Faircloth, they held ground. They didn't slip a ton. Where's your thoughts heading north? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> for me, honestly, looking at going up north, I know the fishing's going to be great there. Every, I expect all 50 guys to catch them. Weather's probably the biggest variable, but the way I look at it, I'm the only guy with a lead. So I, it's almost like, you know, I got a bonus going there, so uh, I feel really good about it. Really look forward to the next one. What's been different this year from other years where you've been solid? I mean, you're obviously one of the stars of the Bassmaster. What's been different this year? You know, it's just, I caught those bites. I, you know, my practices have pretty much been the same as they are every year, but you know, it just seems like those key fish that maybe in the past, a couple of them have, you know, got away from me. This year, I'm putting those fish in the boat and I'm feeling good. You know, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, and I think that's a big thing. We're, we're going to bodies of water that I like. It just, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about it going into it. That's the other thing that helped in this event. I pretty much had the classic made, so I was ready. 
left, you absolutely surprised us that before the final day of this tournament. You said, uh, we said, you're, I know you're concentrating. Like all the guys say, I'm concentrating on winning the tournament at hand. I said, I'm not, I don't give a dang about that. I just want to win Angler of the Year. And that really is what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And I think, honestly, that's what helped me in that tournament because I never really got caught up in the tournament. My deal was in that tournament at Cayuga was just doing the best I could to hold on to my lead for Angler of the Year. And now, with that being said, the last day of the tournament, yeah, then I started thinking about winning. But up to that point, it was nothing but Angler of the Year. And, you know, honestly, that's all it is now is Angler of the Year. And that is all we're looking forward to. That story is going to play out the next time we see you from Escanaba, Michigan, here on The Basket. 23 pounds, 15 pounds.